body shower. So after you've climbed the first 2k up to the Calder Race, you then get this amazing vista of Sakuraba <laughs> cutting away down to your left and it's gut-wrenching because you know as soon as you descend that you have no option but to come back up. It is an out and back. And it starts with this amazing bend which is 270 degrees, goes back under itself, called the Nusta Sakabata or the necktie. Um, designed basically so they didn't have to have very steep gradients, even steeper than they are at the moment. Uh, so it was more palatable for tourists to drive down because the whole road was actually built to encourage tourism um, and bring tourists to part of the island that they couldn't previously get to. It was built in about 1932 and Antonio Peretti was the designer of the road. He was a local engineer from Parma and he actually also designed the Capta Formentura, which most cyclists will know. Um, and there's a plaque to him. Um, a monument to him on the way up to Captain Foreman to where out to the lighthouse. Uh, so he's got his name on two of the best bits of road in Mallorca, well they're certainly the most iconic. The engineering difficulty of getting this road down this canyon meant that in the 1930s they had to do a lot of it without machinery and you can actually see a lot of the bridges and culverts and, and walls they've built for the road have been dry stone walled, so they've all been done by hand. And they specifically did it so they didn't have to use tunnelling equipment and build tunnels. And this part here, this top section of the road, the last 2k where you've been climbing already for 7 or 8k, is the steepest part. It goes to 11 or 12 percent just climbing out of the top of this valley before you get to the Neustasakobatha. And uh, this is where people struggle. And the heat, when it's a hot sunny day, the, the road here is very um, light coloured concrete. The heat gets to you, you're on that steep bit of ground and this is what it's all about. This is the part where it comes to life. You can see why it got its nickname, the snake. This is the start point. Come all the way down to the port, more or less at sea level. Turn around. A few cafes down here if you want coffee or lunch. And you've got nine and a half k to the top of the Col de Ries, and that top of that col is 680 meters above sea level, so that's how far you've got to climb. Average of gradient of seven percent, but we know already it steepens up at the top to between 11 and 12 percent, so you've got that to look forward to. Good luck. This one's about 10k, 680 metres of climbing, more than 50 hairpin bends. The record, reportedly, is held by Richie Port in I think 22 or 23 minutes, which is insane. And not surprisingly, it's got to be one of the most iconic bits of road in Europe, if not the world. So I'm just really enjoying being on my own up here today. It's uh, probably never going to happen again. And it's amazing. And below you, you can suddenly see how this road can make it to the top. But at some point you're asking yourself, where on earth does this road go? 
how do I get out of this canyon? If you come to Mallorca with a bike or to cycle, you've got to do this climb. It's an absolute classic. Thank you.